Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Yolanda Knight claims her mom borrowed her clothes for a business trip and says what she did with them was anything but professional. Tony Knight says she was going to get the items cleaned, but her daughter refused. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Knight versus Knight. Plaintiff, you are suing your mother for $493 for ruining your work clothes. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And defendant, mom, you say uh, that the plaintiff refused the clothes and you did try to clean them. Yes, you're right. All you're right, right, tell me what happened. So my mother went down to Miami on a work trip and she took my clothes. I let her borrow them, that's true. Okay, so she didn't take without asking. Right, right You right. let her borrow them, she, okay. Yeah, she took my clothes down there and was wearing them. And then, you know, it's Miami, she went out afterwards and she comes back and she has the clothes, pulling them out of her suitcase, putting them away. And I saw that they were dirty and I said, why are my clothes dirty? And I looked at my clothes and there were spoiled, or they were spoiled. Your the Honor. clothes were spoiled? I thought yeah. you had them dry cleaned. Your Honor, can I intervene? Jump in, Ms. Knight. Hi, so I um, wanted to go to Miami. I had to go for a business. I work at Radio Sales. And I took my daughter's clothes because I normally work from home, but I knew I was gonna do a couple of meetings, meet a lot of people down there. So I put her clothes in my bag. So on coming back, I was um, taking them out. She was being nosy, trying to see what was in my bag, and she seen her clothes was there. She didn't give me a chance to dry clean them yet, but then I um, took them, was going to take them to the dry cleaners. Okay, so you brought the clothes back. Were they, were they dirty? Were, I mean, you yeah. had worn them, so. Yeah, I, I was just unpacking, and she just happened to see them. What did was, you take? Tell, t I, paint a picture for me. Um, my, I want to know, what did you <laughs> not have in your closet that your daughter did? Um, this business trip required me to have like biz business casual clothes, so I just needed like a nice little bra blazer and a turtleneck and some jeans, some slacks just to wear down to Miami. And you didn't have that? I did not. I, I typically work from home, so I'm always behind the scenes, never in front of the scenes. But when I am out, this is how I usually tend to dress. I feel like I look very fashionable. And I oh, like to... Oh, see how it, that... She wore that to court, Your Honor. I f oh! So I dress. didn't realize <laughs> the skirt was abbreviated. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so you needed to borrow something professional. Right. And you did. I did. And I went out networking a little bit. And I um, went to a couple of different clubs. Nothing too out of the ordinary. You know, what happens in Miami stays in Miami. But yes, I did meet a couple of people and hung out. Oh, all right. So you mixed a little pleasure with your business. Of course, we're in Miami. We have exactly. To. That's, and that's... it ended up on her clothes, my clothes. <laughs> oh, wait. What ended up on your clothes? Bodily fluids. Bodily fluids. Because it wasn't spilled drinks. Your Honor, I just I don't I don't understand why my daughter has such a problem about how I dress. Um, no, I'm don't skip over the bodily <laughs> fluids part, Ms. Knight. Now, we don't want to know all your business, but for the purposes of court, we do need to understand, and you ain't denying it, so... No, you know, I'm grown. I raised my daughter. I had her at a young age, and my business is my business, but my intentions were to clean the clothes before I gave them to her. And so, Ms. Knight, you were upset with your mother. Correct. You could tell that she had been out networking, Right? Mm -hmm. And there was stuff on your clothes that you knew. It, it wasn't what would happen during an average wear, someone borrowing your clothes. Correct, Your Honor. And so that upset you, mm -hmm. but she offered to clean them. So what is it about this that got you so upset? 
And why are you suing for the value of the closing, the, the, the damages? Your Honor, it does bother me that she soiled my clothes. It does bother me. I do want the $493. Because your point is now that I saw what was on there, even now that it's cleaned, I don't want it back. Correct, Your Honor. Coming up. You came to KU homecoming, and that should have been my night. I should have been at a party with my friends. And what did you do? You showed up. That's embarrassing. To the homecoming? What? To the homecoming party. What 19-year-old college student wants their mother at a party? And later. Ms. Klein worked for you. She's also saying she had a personal relationship with you, I presume a sexual relationship with you. We were hooking up, Your Honor. Okay. So you, she was your assistant and you were having sex with her. Closed captioning provided by if you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with a dispute between Yolanda Knight and her mother, Tony Knight, over soiled business clothes. So I think the issue becomes to mom, do you understand, mom, why your daughter feels so disappointed and kind of disgusted that you didn't just respect her clothing, right? Because she's working and trying to establish a career for herself. Do you understand why your daughter's upset? Yes, Your Honor, I understand why my daughter's upset, but I feel like she's more so embarrassed of me about how I wear my clothes and the things that I do. And I, I have worked really hard to take care of her. And I put her through everything that, to make her the perfect daughter. She's the perfect daughter. She's very smart. She's um, successful in her career. She's in law school. I feel like I've done my job oh, yes, as a, a mother. Oh, yes, a young lawyer. I love it. Yeah, I've done Coming my job next. as a mother. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and I feel like as my reward to myself, I'm still in my 30s. I could still be 30 and flirty, and she doesn't understand that this is not too drastic. And I, don't, I want her to be proud of me like I am proud of her. All right. So this is definitely an ongoing, lingering issue between mom and daughter, yeah. right? You were a young mother, obviously. Right. You are in a place now where you want to enjoy the type of experience that many of us already had in our 20s, but you were a mother then. Exactly. Right? Right. And so you're getting now to feel a sense of freedom now that she's grown up and you want to go to Miami and turn up. You want to wear a little short dress and your little booties and, and all of these things. And your daughter feels embarrassed mm -hmm. that her mother looks and dresses younger than you do. Correct. Can you be honest about that, Ms. Knight? Yes, Your Honor, that Your is... mother seemed to be honest with you. Can you be honest? Yes, yes. And talk to your mother. Tell her how you feel. It is very embarrassing to have you out in the streets wearing what you're wearing because my friends see it and my friends say something to me and it bothers me. You came to KU homecoming and that should have been my night. I should have been at a party with my friends and what did you do? You showed up. That's embarrassing. To the homecoming? What, to the homecoming party. What 19-year-old college student wants their mother at a party? She walks in, sits down, grabs a drink like she's one of us. But wait a minute. Now, it's okay to go to homecoming if, I, I mean, I guess if you're going with, you know, to the homecoming of your alma mater and you go with your friends, why did you go to your daughter's party? Your Honor, I am in a radio sales, so I do a lot of behind the scenes, searching for new talent, and where else to go but to a, a homecoming where my daughter is going to be at and try to, like, scout her friends. and see So you were once on. again on location, on location and networking. Always, always. <laughs> oh, but and then networking at night with 19-year-olds? But you got to understand, though, the industry that I work in is cutthroat, and I do need to look like I'm not about to be in retirement. I need to look like a little bit more young and fresh for people to gravitate towards me. So it's not intentionally towards her. It's like, hey, this is my, this is me. I'm not old. I'm not 50. I'm not, well, not 50 is not old, but I'm not old. <laughs> and you know, I can understand your mother's perspective here, okay? And she makes some good points, and so do you. <clears throat> but I'm going to say to you that if you're proud of your body and you want to sh express yourself in this way, is that more important than honoring your daughter in certain moments 
especially around her friends, where she feels uncomfortable and embarrassed. It cannot feel good to have your child embarrassed by you. I could only imagine if CJ looked at me and was embarrassed, right? I mean, it bothers me when he doesn't want me to walk him into the school anymore because, you know, they get to a certain age, they don't want their mother all up walking him to the door. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to be, I feel badly because I want to be there, but I understand he doesn't want to be the kids whose mom's up there with the lunch pail, honey this, honey that. Our children need that separation. Can you respect that? I can. I can. And what can you do to achieve that? Because this really isn't about the clothes. No. I mean, it really isn't. But we're here now. So uh, can you do that? I can. I just want my daughter to know that I care for her. I love, honor, and respect her. And I want her to feel the same way about me. And if it has to come down to dressing appropriately around your grown friends, I will. <laughs> See how easy that was? Ms. Knight, you did some pretty nasty stuff in the clothes. I don't blame <laughs> your daughter for not wanting those particular clothes back. All right. And can I just say before my ruling, I want to give you the opportunity as a mother to say, can you just buy her another blazer, another shirt, and another pair of pants? Yes, I can. I'll make sure it's very top tier of your liking. I love it. And I want to make sure that it's $493 or more because the judgment is for the plaintiff for $493. Court is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $493. I hope it gets better. That's all I'll say. I hope our relationship can mend. I do too. All right. Let's do you gather your things and follow me out, please. Coming up. I would text her and say, hey, where are you? You know, what's going on? And she'd be like, oh, I'll be on, I'm on my way. And it would be like, you know, an hour or two would go by and she just, then she would show up. So I want to know this. Did you think having sex with your boss gave you some privileges? Definitely not. I honestly think he was just jealous. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching We The People with Judge Lauren Lake. Sarah Klein claims her boss fired her when she told him she was pregnant. Connor Brown says Ms. Klein was let go because she was chronically late and bad at her job. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Klein versus Brown. Ms. Klein, you are suing Mr. Brown for $10,000 for wrongful termination. Is that correct? Exactly. Explain to the court what happened. So, um, Mr. Brown here wrongfully fired me, and Judge, I honestly think he claims me of having done a bad job. But honestly, Judge, I think it's because he couldn't stand having me around while I was pregnant, and that he fired me because of my pregnancy. You worked in what capacity with him? So, I was Mr. Brown's assistant for five years until he fired me. Honestly, Judge, we, our relationship kind of got a little more personal and intimate. Oh, okay, Mr. Brown, Ms. Klein worked for you. Yeah. She's also saying she had a personal relationship with you, I presume a sexual relationship with you. We were hooking up, Your Honor. Okay, so you, she was your assistant and you were having sex with her. Yeah, I admit it was absolutely wrong. I shouldn't have done anything, but once we got into the intimate relationship, it started to feel like she started taking advantage of me. Oh! <laughs> and she, she started showing up late to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I would text her and say, hey, where are you? You know, what's going on? And she'd be like, oh, I'll be on, I'm on my way. And it would be like, you know, an hour or two would go by and she just, and then she would show up. So I want to know this. Did you think having sex with your boss gave you some privileges? Definitely not. I honestly think he was just jealous about me moving on with another man. Coming up. At eight months in, so I could prepare for my baby's arrival. And so all this time, you didn't see any changes in her body. You couldn't tell there was anything different. You just didn't know. No, I mean, at the time, she was kind of a big girl. I just thought she was Excuse just eating. Excuse me. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. 
We're back with the case of Sarah Klein, who brought Connor Brown to court after he fired her while she was pregnant. I do see letters about her being tardy, letters about a missed deadline, letters about disclosing confidential information. So she, you're sending her these letters. You're not doing your job well. You're not doing your job well. Is this after you had, had the sexual relationship? Yes. All right, so after the sexual relationship, then you're sending all these letters. You're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. You're not doing this right. But while you were having sex, you were coming to work on time and you were doing what you were supposed to do? I was remaining professional throughout the whole, like my whole time while I was working there. Those are the only excuses, Judge, and I don't think it's enough to fire me. How did you find out she was pregnant? She told me. We're sitting in the office and I was telling her about the things that weren't working out and that I was going to fire her. I was thinking about firing her. That's when she told me, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. I was also telling him about that I wanted to take my maternity leave at eight months in so I could prepare for my baby's arrival. And so all this time, you didn't see any changes in her body. You couldn't tell there was anything different. You just didn't know. No, I mean, at the time, she was kind of a big girl. I just thought she was Excuse just eating. Excuse me. I don't know. I, did, I didn't see anything. Judge. I didn't know that there was any changes. You just thought... Just her performance was the change. All right. You tell them you're pregnant. Now the question becomes, why do you feel you were wrongfully terminated? Because just as he should not fire you because he had sex with you and now the, the relationship was over, he also should not keep you as an employee if you're unable to do the job. I so... I need you to testify to that so I can rule on this case, because I've heard a lot of mess right now, now make it make sense. I was totally able to do my job. I did my job for five years. It's been five years, and people do make, make mistakes sometimes, but my mistakes, were they were like only those three. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. <laughs> Promotional consideration provided by you're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Mr. Brown, I really want you to understand that you're not off the hook here because this is your company. I admit it. Right? I admit it. I was wrong. Dead wrong. And the truth is, once this relationship was over, I can't say that if you were still sleeping with her, if she have, had made those errors, that you would have fired her. So the fact that she was no longer sleeping with you and she made errors. You've been, she's been at your company for five years. She had a bad patch, she made some errors. For that reason, I can't say that you should have fired her because of those errors after you all had a sexual relationship because that changes the dynamic period. And you've gotta bear some responsibility for that. So it is the judgment of this court that the plaintiff was wrongfully terminated. Judgment for the plaintiff for $10,000, court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes ten thousand dollars. I didn't fire you because you were pregnant. This is ridiculous. I don't you know were why you jealous. Do that. I wasn't jealous. Yes, you were. I'm done. You fired me because you couldn't handle having me around. No, that wasn't it. I fired you because you were horrible at your job. Please not. follow me out. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.